hello guys hope you're doing well and as always if you are new to my channel i would humbly request you to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so that you shall able to see all the latest engineering videos that i will upload on my channel thanks okay so the problem at hand today is basically we need to calculate uh, the magnitude and coordinate direction angles of the resultant force okay so uh, he is asking us to calculate magnitude and coordinate direction angles which are alpha beta and gamma with respect to the x y and z axis but of not f2 and f1 no not he is asked interested in calculating the magnitude and coordinate direction angles of the resultant force this there is no resultant force here okay so where is the resultant force if you see this is force f2 and this is force f1 these one and uh, if we use the parallelogram method this will be our resultant force this resultant force we need to calculate its magnitude and we also need to calculate uh, uh, its coordinate direction angles and also we need to calculate it uh, in in cartesian vector form which is ijk so this is the problem at our hand and we see now is that we have uh, two different uh, forces here f1 and f2 but the problem is this f1 force is in scalar form and another problem is this f2 force is also in scalar form so we need to uh, think in our mind and basically we have to uh, start solving it by converting this f1 force which is 100 pounds in scalar to convert it into the cartesian vector form okay and also to convert this f2 into also cartesian vector form because it is in scalar form which scalar means there is only magnitude given no directions are there so this is our origin this is our x axis this is our y axis and this is our z axis first we calculate the value of coordinate b okay so we start from the origin uh, so from here if we move to along the x axis uh, till point b is here from here to here we see it is 4 feet and then from here we move along the y axis it is 7 feet but since this is the origin and this is positive y axis we are moving in the negative y direction so the y value of coordinate b is minus 7 and since it is lying on the x y plane rather we can say it is lying on the x and minus y axis plane so it will be 0 so we can see the coordinates of point b is 4 on the x axis minus 7 on the y axis and z on the uh, and 0 on the z axis okay another coordinate c if we calculate it this is our origin x y z are waiting here and we can see it is as you move along there is only one value which along the z axis which is 4 the x and y coordinate at this point will be 0 so c will be 0 0 4 okay another point a this point a is over here if you look at this point a we will see that uh, from this is the origin if we move along the x axis so and the radius of this uh, to reach point a is 3 feet okay so the uh, the value of x axis uh, along the uh, for the coordinate point a will be basically 3 and this diamond this dimension from here to here will be if you can see this angle is 40 so it will be 3 sin 40 but since this is the origin as we move along the minus x we put uh, the value as minus 3 sin 40 okay and another value will be again the radius is 3 feet and we have to move to point a so from here we will move uh, along this point to a it will be 3 this will be cos 40 okay so 3 cos 40 and the value since it is lying on the uh, minus x y plane minus x y plane which is a 2d plane the point a the z value is 0 so we say it minus 3 sin 40 3 cos 40 and z is 0 so we have calculated the coordinates a b c we already know we need to calculate the resultant which is fr its magnitude and its coordinate direction angles now we uh, we also know another very important uh, uh, feature about this problem is that if the, uh, this uh, coordinate from origin to point a is 3 feet from here to here point c it is 4 feet if you look at it from c to a if you look uh, this 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 basically is a triangle okay and if you see this is basically the perpendicular this is the base and this can be the hypotenuse so if this is three feet this is four feet we can easily say ca will be five feet uh, by how we calculate five is basically by use of the Pythagoras theorem okay 
So that is how we calculate the value of uh, AC equal to 5 uh, feet. So everything is understood. We have uh, planned everything. Uh, now we need to calculate F1. Okay, for F1 when we look at it, its magnitude is 100. Okay, and another thing is that uh, since this is a triangle, so and th this, uh, if you look at it, this uh, dimension, it will be 300, uh, 3 upon 5, this AC is 5, 3 upon 5, and we know this angle uh, along the x-axis, this angle, this angle from here to here, straight line along the x-axis is going to be sine 40 i, okay. But since this is the origin, we are moving al on the negative x axis, so we put a negative sign. So it is 100, 3 upon 5 sine 40 i. Plus, now for the same coordinate of uh, uh, A, if you look at it from uh, C, we know this force is basically in uh, 3D, so we can say it will be again 100, 3 upon 5, 100, the magnitude is 100, 3 upon 5 which is again if you look at it is basically the uh, adjacent adjacent upon hypotenuse if you can say or you can all if you have different ratios you can say this is the base uh, and this is the hypotenuse okay so it will be 100 3 upon 5 but this time as we move uh, along the y axis from to here to here this angle if you look this is the cosine cos 40 so 100 3 by 5 cos 40 j then we are only left with one coordinate which is the z axis component okay the z will be again the magnitude is 100 okay and uh, this ratio which will be perpendicular divided by the hypotenuse it will be 4 upon 5 and since it is along the z axis we put a uh, unit vector k but if you look this f1 is direct directed downwards in the opposite direction of z axis so definitely this component uh, for f1 will also be directed in the downward direction so that is why we put a minus sign here okay this is how we calculate uh, f1 which was given in scalar form as 100 pounds so if you multiply these values you will be getting f1 in cartesian vector form as uh, 38.57 i plus 46 j minus 80 k okay so this will be uh, f1 now we are interested in calculating the value of f2 if you look at the value of f2 again what we will do this uh, is this force is starting from point c and ending at b this position uh, this uh, arrow is ending at b so we will take the position vector we already know the uh, the scalar value of this 81 pounds okay so we what we will do we'll subtract the coordinates of point b from the coordinates of point c okay so when we will subtract it by means of the position vector concept it will be 81 pounds and then 4 minus 0 i then it will be minus 7 minus 0 j and 0 minus 4 k okay what how we do it because we subtract a coordinate of b from the coordinate of point c this is where the arrow is ending so the final coordinate force will be treated as force bc so that is why we subtracted the coordinates of b from the coordinates of c so when and then we divide it uh, we square the value and take the square root of the uh, numerators so when we simplify it we will get f2 as 36i minus 63j minus 36k so we have calculated f1 and we have calculated f2 so we know if this is fr so uh, it will be simply f1 plus f2 will give you fr okay so f1 plus f2 will give you fr so what we did here is we, we added the uh, the i components of f1 and f2 we added the j components of f1 and f2 and we added the k components of f1 and f2 we get it as minus 2.567 i minus 17 j minus 116 k okay so this is the resultant force uh, which we have calculated it and we are very happy that this resultant force is in cartesian vector form now we we need to calculate also its magnitude so simply we take the uh, square root we, uh, and then squared these values and have taken the square root so we say when we take it out and we calculate it fr we get it as 117 pounds now we have calculated uh, the, the magnitude uh, of the resultant force and we also know the cartesian vector form which means the i j and k of this resultant force fr so we need to calculate the uh, also calculate the the coordinate direction angles of fr which is nothing but alpha beta and gamma which are the coordinate direction angles along the x y and z axis we know alpha is the 
coordinate direction angle with uh, of this resultant force along x axis beta is the angle of this resultant force from the y axis and gamma is the the angle of this resultant force with the z axis so when we calculated alpha uh, cos alpha so which is equals to alpha equals to cos inverse uh, the x component is minus 2.567 divided by the the magnitude of the resultant force which is 117 we get it uh, alpha equal to 91.3 when we calculate beta it will be cos inverse of uh, minus 17 by it is minus 17 divided by the uh, resultant force magnitude 117 so we get the angle as 94.8 and gamma will be again uh, basically 116k minus 116k divided by the magnitude of this resultant force uh, which is uh, 117 pounds so this is 117 pounds when you divide it and we uh, take the cross inverse we get an angle equal to 172 degrees so alpha is 91.3 beta is coming out to be uh, minus so is 98.4 degrees and gamma is coming out to be 172 degrees and this is the resultant force whose magnitude and coordinate direction angles we have successfully calculated i hope you have under understood this problem and uh, i thank you all uh, for your time and uh, in the end please do take care of yourself because you are worth it Allah is